Today, we are going to take a look at a vision that was given to William Brennan in 1933 and see if this word could possibly be applied to the 2024 election here in America. William Brennan's vision, I believe, could possibly be a prophetic warning to the church that women will vote in a woman president to power. And this will end up being a tragic mistake that could lead to the complete destruction of America. Sounds pretty dramatic, right? Well, I have the data in this upcoming election to back these claims up. But we will see in a minute that the role of women in this upcoming election will choose the next president of the United States. This will be a so sober warning to women in America. Be careful for what you wish for because you might just get it. Hi, my name is Joshua Simone, and welcome to my channel. The ministry is called Torn Curtain. That's because when Jesus died and rose again, the curtain in the Old Testament temple tore from top to bottom, symbolizing a new covenant, a better covenant, and direct access to God through Jesus' death and resurrection. Hit the subscribe button. I promise to bring you the best Christian content. I'm going after the tough and controversial subjects. Please help me get to 100K subscribers. 87% of my audience has not subscribed. Hit subscribe today. For those who don't know who William Brennan was, he was one of the most famous and controversial figures of the early Pentecostal charismatic movement. He was known for very fiery and confrontational preaching and great prophetic abilities and the ability to move in the gift of healing. Many people believe that he was the second Elijah mentioned in the Bible in the last days. I would say that his strongest gifting was in the prophetic. But I have some very serious concerns about him and his ministry. Because balanced charismatics like Derek Prince, Erwin Baxter, Gordon Lindsay have pointed out some serious issues with his ministry that definitely need to be discussed. These statements are not meant to be overcritical of him or his ministry, but we also must be sober about his ministry and that it had some serious downsides. Go watch Robert's Learden, God's Generals, to see the serious issues with William Brennan's ministry. Now, I know many people are going to say Robert's Learden went into the gay lifestyle. He did repent and has now been sober for many, many years. We are looking at Robert's Learden's life as a historian, totally, not as um, a spiritual leader. But he went off into great theological errors. And this is a universal fact among most charismatic Bible teachers these days. They're just not very good on doctrine and theology. We must be honest about that. But William Brennan died early in the prime of his ministry it was also a sign that many people felt was the judgment of the Lord. But this will be one of my most controversial videos up to this point, and I expect to get major pushback from this topic because it's not very easy to hear with the modern ear. But I want you to hear me very, very clearly. This video is not meant to be an anti-woman video, but it might come off that way. Please hear me out and watch the whole video. Even if you get triggered at some point, I believe that there are some really valid points given here. But I am definitely not against women. I am totally for women. Women are extremely valuable. I think most of the women that he's talking about in this video are liberal women. But I will be releasing more videos soon discussing the history of the charismatic movement and how the charismatic movement never came into full maturity. And that's why charismatic history is filled with failures, controversial scandals, and much more. Because we never learned the lessons from the past. Now, before we get into William Brennan's vision, I do need to clarify a few things also about his ministry and the prophetic. Most of my viewers see theological issues as very black and white, and this is very concerning to me. They go into extremes like either William Brennan was one of the greatest prophets who ever lived and is next to God in the Trinity, or William Brennan's ministry was a complete fraud. I know for myself, most situations that I faced are in the gray in life. They're not just black and white. And I want to rightfully divide these type of situations to call out the good that people have done and to acknowledge the ways that they've missed it without totally destroying and dismissing everything they've done. One prominent pastor during William Brennan's time said this, I would trust William Brennan's great faith in God, but I wouldn't trust any of his theology. And I think that's a good point. 
So for me personally, I have serious concerns with his ministry, but I would not completely dismiss his ministry entirely either. This is what make many get really upset with me because that I give any credence to anything he had to say at all. But God can speak through anyone, and he even once spoke through a donkey. I believe that God still speaks through dreams and visions today, and the chapter for this is Joel chapter 2. God has spoken to me through dreams and visions many times even this year. And the problem is, is that dreams and visions aren't always from the Lord. We must test the spirits. We must test the supernatural and judge these things within the community of saints. This isn't being done in American churches, especially charismatic churches. This is why the modern day prophetic and charismatic movements has so many problems. If we do not test things, they will lack credibility. And if they lack credibility, then people will despise the supernatural. And that's what's happening. We see these camps where people are either totally of the spirit or people are totally of the word, but nothing in between. And the truth is, is R.T. Kendall and Smith Wigglesworth were both calling for a word and spirit movement to not throw the baby out with the bathwater. We need a solid foundation in the word and good theology, but we also need the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and his giftings moving in the church. Now we can all test this William Brennan prof uh, prophecy vision from 1933 together as a community. I want your feedback, I really do, because I learned so much from you guys. Sometimes I feel like I learn more from you guys than I do in, that I do in presenting these videos. So I saw a new movie that was just released that's in the theaters about Ronald Reagan. And in one part of the film, Ronald Reagan was the governor of California. And a famous minister came to his house and gave him a prophetic word that one day he will rise to be the president of the United States. And him and his wife thought the word was totally crazy at the time. He had no thought of running for presidency, but he went on to serve two terms in the White House and in his last election won 49 out of 50 states in that election. So God still does speak today. And there is some validity in these things, okay? The prophetic is real, but a lot of times, because of a few loonies and kooks, people will throw out everything. Okay, so I just gave you a modern example that they put in this movie that's in theaters with Ronald Reagan. I have some serious concerns, again, with William Brennan's ministry, especially his theology. However, I believe that this vision could have been a word from the Lord for our times, and even if William Brennan made up this word, let's just say, let's just stick to the concept that he is presenting at a minimum and see if it's true or not. God, again, once spoke through a donkey. So it's not so much about the messenger. This is a hard concept for people to understand. God's spirit falls upon a messenger. So think about Saul when he prophesied with the prophets. Up to that point, Paul, Saul had never prophesied. Okay, But in the New Testament, character, theology, and practice of a ministry should really matter. We don't want to discount that either. Now, before we get into the vision, I need to state this. 1933 was a different time. Okay, Women had just been granted the right to vote, and things were much more traditional during this time. So keep that in mind, because his sermon here could come off as very offensive to the modern ear. Okay, so this is a trigger warning that this might really offend you. And I do not agree with everything William Brennan will say in this video either. So don't associate me with this message 100%. We're going to dissect that word a little later on in the video. But I do think it's possible that the general idea that he is trying to communicate is possibly correct for our times. And I think it could possibly apply to this upcoming election. Now, before we do this, let me just do a one minute quick promotional video. So this video today is brought to you by Birch Gold, one of your most trusted sources in adding gold to your investment portfolios, your 401ks and IRAs. It's a way that I can fund this ministry and offer a product that I personally believe in. We are living in uncertain times, and two monumental things are happening right now. The U.S. debt is so large that the United States is going to begin to just make interest payments on our debt. And the U.S. dollar is on the decline because the world is moving away from the U.S. dollar. We're seeing also shakings in the stock market, the world moving towards digital currencies, cryptocurrencies. 
One way to secure your financial future is to make sure you own hard assets like gold, which are not tied to the US dollar. This is something I'm doing myself, investing in silver. Birch Gold has people flocking to them right now because people realize how serious the times we are in. Now, all securities do come with risks. I'm not a financial professional, so you're responsible to do your due diligence. But the people at Birch Gold will give you a great education on gold so that you can make an informed decision. Gold has beat the stock market for the last 24, 20 years. So get your free gold kit today. Get your free promotional offer and find out how to do this by going to Birch Gold backslash Torn Curtain. When you get to the web page, you just put your name, phone number, and email, and they'll send you over a free gold kit by email and follow up with a phone call. Okay, so let's get into William Brennan's prophetic vision from 1933. I didn't mean that to you any harm, women. I don't mean you Christian women, but just to see women coming into politics and everything, it's a disgrace, it's a breaking of the American morale. And remember, this is America will uh, a woman, I, I better leave it alone. But just remember this, I predict this, that a woman will be president before we're annihilated. That's right, I said that in 1933 by vision. Sure, it's a woman's world. Where to start from? Hollywood. All your dirty, filthy dressing and things, that's what's crept into her homes and things like that. Now it comes through television and everything else, it's a disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> predicted that women would keep demoralizing and the nation would keep falling and they keep hanging the mother or black mother like that to they become a woman, become an idol. And after a while, that a miracle would be ruled by a woman. Mark and Sid, it's not right. And how that that permit women to vote in doing so that would elect the wrong president. And in this would be a woman stand up that would govern the United States. Now, so then I said, there will be in that time, during that time, the women will be permitted to vote and they'll elect the wrong person. They did it on this last election. Amen. That's right. Which will start the stronghold. A woman will take the place of a president or something of great, some high power in America. When, I say this with respect, ladies, when a woman gets out of the kitchen, she's out of her place. Now I said, remember, in that day, before the end time comes, before the end time comes, that a woman, now you all keep this road down, there will be a great powerful woman raised up either to be president or dictator or some great powerful woman in this United States. And she'll sink under the influence of women. Now uh, you remember that's thus saith the law. During that time, it'll come to pass that, that there'll be a great woman rise up in the United States. She'll be beautifully dressed, and I got princess, perhaps a Catholic church, see? That'll take rulership over the power, overpower the others in the United States. She'll be beautiful to look at, but she'll be cruel hearted as she can be. I said, then I looked again, and I saw the United States just blow to pieces. There was nothing left on it. And I predicted then, now this, that was thus saith the Lord. I said, I seem to look like his stumps are burning, rocks blowed out. And the whole United States just looked bare, laying like as far as I could see where I was standing. And I said, I predict according to the way time is moving, it'll be sometime between this year, 33 and 77. Okay, so hit the like button. This will help get the message out to YouTube. It's something small that you can do to help me. I want this message to go out as many people as possible. So they didn't have video back then um, as much. So I had to um, sync some audio together with some other video of him preaching. So they didn't match. But I wanted to get the message out to you. To be very clear about this message, because it's important we be sober about this, he wasn't 100% accurate on this. He was a little bit off on the time frame, which felt that he thought that this would happen between 77 um, and that time pass has passed. And he said a few things about the Catholic Church that I didn't include, and some of that was just strange. This was some some of it was harsh to hear by the modern ear, but I think the general idea that he's speaking here of a woman gaining more power in society through Hollywood and sexualization. And then their vote would end up shaping elections. And now women are the largest group voting block in America right now. 
So they, they have the largest base, I think, at 37 percent or 36 percent of the voting bloc, which makes them even more powerful than men. And this could end up to them leading to electing a woman president who could possibly destroy America. And of course, we are really speaking about liberal women in these cases. Church women on a whole do vote conservative. So please, church women, do not get offended. It's not necessarily directed to you. I believe that this was directed to lim liberal women. But I... <laughs> I do not want this video to come across as misogynistic or anti-women video. That is not my heart at all. Personally, I was raised with two sisters and my mother. My dad was often working in his business. I love women. I have such a heart for women. And I also do not have a problem with a woman becoming president of the United States. I think women can lead in the marketplace and the government as we see in the Bible. However, I don't think that women should lead in the family and the church. And in the church, they shouldn't hold senior leadership positions. I would like to see a woman become a president in my lifetime, but I just don't want to see that right now. So can this word be applied to Camilla Harris in the presidential election? I think it's quite possible indeed, and I'm going to show you the data to back that up. So let's review some of the things that he said in this 1933 vision, and we'll unpack that and get into the data. He felt that things started shifting with women due to women's role in Hollywood films, and that that, that role was sexualized to a certain degree with the way women dressed, and that he meant that this ended up becoming more of a woman's world. And he felt that it started bringing over, of overly sexual content into our homes through television, right? And that message, the first part of the message, is very true. Many people might want, want to admit it, but you think of one of the most influential people in our culture right now would be Kim Kardashian. Well, think about social media, which is all surrounding usually beautiful women. And now we have OnlyFans, which their CEO released a statement this year, their revenue is in the billions. So these women create these followers around this sexual content. And really, in all actuality, they're some of the most powerful people in society. It seems that the media does revolve around overly sexualization of women, indeed. I felt women... So then he felt that women would keep demoralizing this nation until women became an idol. And after a while, this would cause a woman to rule this nation. And I believe this is true as well. I believe that many of the women in media are becoming idols. Many of the men are becoming idols too. But it's a little different with women. In many ways, women have become idols, especially the beautiful women. I'm in New York City, and sometimes... Coming out of the subway, I'll see 100-foot billboards with lingerie models on them coming out of the subway. And it's like during those times, I'm like, wow, this is completely out of control. This nation worships beauty and sexuality. It's a god. It's a big problem. So then he goes on to say that women would pr be permitted to vote and that they would elect the wrong president as they did in this last election, he said, and he is referring to JFK Jr. in that place. As many people know, JFK Jr. was charismatic, handsome, and young. And of course, JFK's presidency was cut tragically short. Now, more women did vote for Nixon in that election. However, the younger women voted for him in a dominant fashion by plus 10 points and handed him the White House along with Catholics and African Americans. And you wonder if Kennedy was the right choice for our nation, being that his presidency was cut short and that it brought the nation so much trauma. You wonder if that was God's best, not to mention all of the affairs that he was having on his wife. So the point and the moral of the story is charisma can be a dangerous thing. And I think the general point that William Brennan is pointing to is Charisma, JFK won on charisma. He was able to fool people because he was handsome and a good speaker. And unfortunately, he was able to fool a lot of the women into voting him. And we are seeing that right now in the charismatic churches. Character is way more important than charisma, but charisma and gifting often win out. We can become easily fooled by charisma, 
But character, you can't be fooled with character. God says in Galatians, he will not be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Seems like William Brennan kind of leaned towards women not voting at all from what I can get from this prophetic word or vision. But me personally, I don't have a problem with women voting. I think it's a really good thing. I just worry sometimes about everyone, not just women, but everyone included, making informed decisions. The people are not fooled by charisma. The people are not fooled by the personality of someone, but the policies that will intact. Then William Brennan goes on to say, I obviously don't feel women's he said, I feel that women's place is in the kitchen. And if they get out of the kitchen, they get out of their God free role. Okay. So uh, obviously I don't agree with that. Many uh, contempor uh, contemporaries of William Brennan felt that he had major issues with women. I'm not sure if that was true or not, but in the audio, he does seem to premise two different times that his intention was not to be disrespectful or to hurt women. That he was saying, listen, women, I love you guys, but I'm just telling it how I see it. And his exact wording in this case was so interesting. He said this, a woman will take the place of a president or something like that. Isn't that so interesting? Isn't that exactly what Kamala Harris did in this presidency, in taking the presidency away from Joe Biden? Okay, a woman will take the place of a president or something like that. We're seeing that. Okay, because again, nobody voted for Harris. She didn't have to go through primaries. And even in past primaries, she didn't even get one vote. But in pushing Biden out of the way, she soared to the top of the polls. And to me, this was extremely dangerous because this wasn't part of democracy. This was a person that just somehow got handed into a good situation and Americans were fooled. She rose to the top of the polls right away. And the truth is, is that they did a poll recently and said that almost 79 percent of Americans do not think this nation is headed in the right direction. So that would in, implicitly make the current administration a major, major problem. However, the polls are deadlocked. So this whole situation with Harris seems dangerous to me. It seemed like they were able to push Joe out of the way, rise her to the top. And because of the momentum, she has been up in this race almost in all of the polls since day one. And considering she is the most unpopular vice president in modern times, and she didn't do a good job as vice president, actually, it's been a total disaster. But yet here we are. The polls are dead locked. So then he goes on to say that before the end times comes, there will be a great and powerful woman rise up and she will become a president or dictator. And she will sink under the influence of woman. Thus saith the Lord. So he even seemed to, in describing this vision he had, subscribe the, the Lord's name to it. So William Brannan felt that this newly empowered women would send the country in the wrong direction. Now, this does have some merit. The midterm elections in 2022 was on track to be a major red wave for the Republicans. And the Republicans would do to sweep the House and the Senate. Why? Because the President Biden had been terrible. The economy was doing terrible. There was inflation. There were wars. This administration had so many blunders. There should have been a red wave where we took the House, the Senate by, by majority. But the red wave never came in the midterm elections. And why is that? Political commentators say that the main issue was women, okay? And again, we're talking about liberal women here. Women voted Democrat in overwhelming fashion in all of these races. And why is that? Because it turns out women were standing up against the reversal of Roe v. Wade that happened in the Supreme Court. They wanted their reproductive rights. And this is what has stopped the red wave from happening. Again, it should be noted that these were mostly liberal women, not church women. But this was a case study in women voting in the wrong direction and reproductive rights being the main reason why. Okay, so this is a case study 
of America going wrong in the wrong direction. We should have went red, but it didn't go red because of the women's vote. Now, this was the shocking part of everything. William Brennan gets into this vision where he sees the destruction of America. He sees everything is totally destroyed. And this is a direct result of women gaining more power and influence and then women electing a president that takes power. And when I heard this, I had this eerie feeling deep inside of me. My spirit bore witness to this word. Again, this is not an anti-woman video. I'm not here to bash women. Women are amazing. I love women. But, and I'm not so much into William Brennan. I'm not a big fan of his ministry. I'm really not. I need to say that. But this vision really resonated with me, and I felt I had to share it. I felt that this does apply to the situation that we have in America right now. I feel that this is a word of the Lord for America. So then William Brennan describes this woman that will be beautifully dressed. She will be beautifully to look at, but she will be cruel hearted as can be. Now, this is a little bit about how I view Camilla Harris. She is somewhat attractive for an older woman. And she dresses really well with designer clothes and designer jewelry and expensive jewelry. And she seems likable. She laughs a lot. And she, she, for the most part, she doesn't make fun of people like Trump does, etc. But the truth is, I know deep down, she is not a nice person that she looks to be. I am not trying to attack her because she is a woman or African American. That is not what is play here. Okay, I live in New York City. It's a very ethnically diverse region. But I believe deep down, Camilla Harris, like Hillary Clinton, these are mean and nasty people behind the scenes. I don't believe these are nice people. I do not believe that these are nice women. Camilla Harris could not retain staff members because nobody wanted to work with her. I got the type of opinion from doing a lot of research that people considered to her to be a spoiled brat. And she even had problem retaining staff at like a 90 percent level. Now, Trump did have problem retaining staff, too, but not that bad. Nobody wanted to work with this woman. Why? Because she is mean and nasty. And the exact thing that people are saying about Trump, that he's mean and nasty. But actually, the truth is, is nobody wants to work for Harris. So she's worse. So a lot of what happens with these situations happen behind closed doors and the American public would not know it. Not to mention, I don't think that Camilla Harris is competent. That is my main issue with her. Not because she's a woman, not because of her skin color. I saw a long-term friend of Camilla Harris do an interview with Tucker Carlson this week, and she stated this, Camilla Harris has never had a real job in her whole entire life. She has only worked for state and government jobs. And she was handed those jobs from relationships that she had with different men, romantic relationships. So she didn't earn any of those positions. She often ended up in these positions, high-paying jobs. Some of them were even no-show jobs. And she really had no responsibility. She was just handed those offices because of who she was dating. And to be honest, I wouldn't trust Camilla Harris to run a Dunkin' Donuts, let alone a country. Okay? So the truth is, yes, she was attorney general. Yes, she was um, a senator for many years. I don't think she did a good job in any of those in her own city. San Francisco is a total disaster. People are moving out. And I think state of California is headed for bankruptcy. People are fleeing California and New York in droves because of their policy, homelessness, crime, all of those things. So just a case study in Camilla Harris. It's not a case study in competency. OK, if anything, it shows her incompetency. <clears throat> So then William Brennan gets further into his vision and he said after this woman rises to power and he even said she could become a dictator. And that's funny because most people are saying the exact thing about Trump. They're saying that they're scared of Trump becoming a dictator. But in this situation, he says this woman president or dictator. 
Okay, so basically a lot of times people will throw the things at you, what's really in their heart if they're narcissistic. So it's, is it possible Camilla becomes a dictator? Yes, well, she's made statements that they might come into your house and take your guns. And she's made some radical statements about redistributing the wealth, etc. So it's not that far off, okay, based on reality. But he saw the United States blown to pieces. There was nothing left as far as he could see. And he said this, thus saith the Lord. He saw all these burning stumps, America just in, in ashes and fires and burning stumps, rock blown out, which I don't know what that means. And the whole United States looked bare as far as his eye could see. Now, he felt that this would happen, this woman would rise to power in between 1933 and 1977. But I could say this, as someone who has gotten dreams and visions or prophetic words, they almost never come in the timeline that you think they're going to come in. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God often works very slowly and takes a long time in manifesting his plans that come to pass. So a lot of times the things that God has shown me in my heart, in my own devotional time, do not come to pass in the time period that I think it's going to be. Now, I know this part was a bit dramatic, seeing America completely destroyed. And it's a bit dramatic for me, if I'm going to be honest, okay? I, I have a hard time 100% believing that. But a lot of times what people could be seeing is the spiritual and emotional state. So the soul of America, it's possible. I'm not saying that's the truth. I didn't know William Brennan. But the geopolitical situation is, is so bad. This is the worst time since the Cuban Missile Crisis where nuclear war could have been imminent. And I do believe America is closer to nuclear war right now than any time in the last 50 years. So this is not this is not a total laughable concept. We could find ourselves in a situation with this very complicated geopolitical situation. And Camilla Harris has no international experience in international politics. She is not known for that. She's known her experiences all in domestic affairs and as a prosecutor. OK, so the truth is, is that this is a very dangerous situation she's inheriting with some very dangerous people, brutal dictators, people that you have to really be very firm with. Iran, China, Russia. These are not type of people that you can get, you know, face with, a, you know, um, being friendly and stuff. You have to be stern and firm with these type of people. So I really think that the stakes are so high in this election. And I do believe that if Camilla Harris wins, it will be because of the vote of women. And now we're going to I'm going to back up that data to show what they're saying, what the professional pollers are saying about this upcoming election. And what I saw was shocking. So it wasn't just William Brennan's vision, but the fact that when I looked and did research that the women and so many people in the media saying the women will hand the next president their victory. So men are overwhelmingly voting for Trump. And what's even shocking is that African-American men, too, are now gravitating towards Trump in large, in large numbers. I heard political commentators say this. Camilla Harris reminds men of their ex-wife. And Donald Trump reminds women of their ex-husband's divorce attorney. So there are some real emotional issues that come into play with choosing a president. But we need to try to do our best to separate emotions from the voting process to a certain degree. Right. We don't want to totally ignore our emotions, but we want to make an informed, logical decisions based on the candidates policies. Their personalities only last during the term that they're in office, but their policies can sometimes last for decades. So it's way more important to make an informed decision based on reason. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up an article about women voting. So you're going to see here in this article, this is how women voters decided the 2020 election. So it was women that put Joe Biden in the White House. OK, and shocking statistics as far as this election was concerned, 57 percent of women compared to 45 percent of men. 
that is a 12 percent point difference which is huge again women are the largest voting bloc in the united states so men were not so easy to vote for joe biden they were 12 percent down and if i have to be honest women voted for biden because, well, A, everybody voted for, majority of people voted for Biden was because he, he wasn't Trump, okay? The guy did basically spent the whole campaign in his basement. He didn't really even do any rallies or anything. But the truth is, if I have to be honest, people voted, women voted for Biden because he seemed like they're, they're like a nice old man, like their grandfather figure. So if I just had to guess, okay, I don't know that for certain, and this article doesn't say that. But actually, many people say that Joe Biden has a very violent temper, and he curses and screams like a madman. So men were not so easily fooled by Biden's weakness on so many levels. Men saw through this. Men saw his weakness. I know that I do. I don't trust his ability to lead. He's supposed to have 50 years worth of experience in the Senate. But look at the disaster our country is, okay? So the truth is, based on this article, that women put Biden in the White House. They were the reason, particularly white women, white liberal women, put Joe Biden in the White House, okay? Biden's presidency has been the worst in my lifetime. OK, I was shocked that anyone could beat out George W. Bush, considering he started two wars and there were no weapons of mass destructions. And I just saw how the mob really hated George Bush. I was in NYU at the time and I saw these protests. There was a protest with a half a million people. People hated George Bush. But Biden has been by far the worst president in my lifetime, and it's not even close, not to mention if he is even running thing at all, because we know that he started losing his mental faculties. Okay. So just to, just to really quick to point things out, he has a bad economy. We have inflation. That's the highest since, uh, 1970s. We are on the verge of world war three. We have three potential different wars brewing. The border is the biggest domestic failure in our lifetimes. We had the disaster withdrawal from Afghanistan, which started all of these geopolitical situations. Mortgage rates are through the roof. Crime rates are terrible, especially in urban areas. And everything is much more expensive. Joe Biden is the worst president of my lifetime and the worst definitely since Jimmy Carter, and he might even be worse. And let's just add, Jimmy Carter was a nice guy. He was a nice Christian guy. But nice guys don't always make good presidents. It's time that we really get real with this. Okay, do I want a president to be friendly? Absolutely. But I want them to be tough as well. Okay, so here's another article from Fox News. White women could clinch the election for Harris. CNN data reporter saying she's doing historically well. So Harris is performing very well with women. Again, like I said before, almost 80% of people feel that this country is not headed in the direction, but the polls are 50-50 right now in this election. So it doesn't even make logical sense. This election shouldn't, we shouldn't even be talking about this. It should be just such a blowout just based on experience. But the reason it is is because people are have this extreme distaste for Trump, and I think that is largely because he represents an authoritarian father figure. But that's another whole conversation for another day. But white women will clinch this election for Harris. Harris leads with white women could ultimately help her win the election, this article says. He argued that they make up 36% of the electorate, making them the most powerful group. So when we're talking about five to seven point shifts in Camilla Harris's direction among white women, we are talking about that as the major part of the electorate. OK, so this article is saying, like, basically, this is because of white women. She could end up winning this race and winning pretty handedly. And this article went on to say the main issue for women is reproductive rights. And that's why they're choosing to go with Harris, um, at least what they're saying on paper. 
but it, it, if she wins this election, it could be it could be because she did so well with white woman. This article says, okay, okay. So <clears throat> this is part of the reason I think why they presented these rape charges against Trump and why they brought the public Stormy Daniels case to trial was because they knew that it would hurt his chances with women, and it worked. They won. Even though there was someone from Al Alvin Bragg's office, the attorney general in New York City, that directly admitted that all of these cases were brought for political reasons. He got caught on film saying this. You can't even make this stuff up. That they launched all these cases against Trump for political reasons. And they did this to destroy his image with women. So let's look at how the presidential polls are with women right now. Let's take a look. There are significant shifts that benefit Vice President Harris when it comes to women. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. So, you know, if you look at is Harris doing better than Biden 2020? White men, she's not. Women of color, she's not. Men of color, she's not. But among white women, in fact, she is. In fact, it's to a historic degree. So let's take a look here. The GOP's margin among white women. Look, Romney won him by nine. All right. Trump in 2016 won him by six. You go back four years ago, Trump won him by seven. Look now, look how much lower Trump's margin is among white women. Look, he still leads, but it's well within the margin of error. It's just a point. He's doing six points worse than he did four years ago. In fact, he's doing the worst if this holds for a GOP candidate this century among white women, John. Well, how much do white women matter in yeah. the electorate? So this is the whole thing, right? How much do they matter? If you were to break it down, white women, white men, women of color, men of color, white women make up the plurality of the electorate, 36 percent. So, you know, yesterday we were talking about those massive gains that Donald Trump was making among black men, black women. But the bottom line is they actually make up a considerably smaller portion of the electorate than white women do. So when we're talking about five, six point shifts, seven point shifts, in Kamala Harris's direction, we're talking about that among a major part of the electorate, and that can actually move the overall electorate more than ginormous shifts among a considerably smaller part of the electorate. You can just John. do the math. More than double the impact, depending on how it all spaces itself out. Why? Why? Why, why, why? I think that this gets at a pretty good reason why. All right. Abortion is the top voting issue. We're going to look at Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, on average, where 80 percent or north of the voters are white. Look at this. The percentage of women who say that abortion is the top voting issue come November, 27 percent. Look at this gender gap among men in those states. It's just 7 percent. I think what we're talking about here is after Roe v. Wade was overturned in 2022, white women in the suburban areas, in these key battleground states, have very much turned against Republicans. And we're seeing in the polling right now because Kamala Harris is doing historically well, at least this century, for a Democratic candidate among white women. And of course, they make up a very large portion of the electorate. If she wins, it could ultimately be because she did so well with white women, John. As we said, big shifts with an F there, Harriet. And thank you. Thank you, my very friend. Much. OK, so I hope I presented my case today and shown again this was not meant to be an anti-women misogynistic video but there is a lot of truth here to what William Brennan's vision showed okay I'm not sure if it was from the Lord let's test this vision together as a community I'd like to hear your thoughts comment down below to let me know if this bears witness to you through scripture through personal discernment we'll all do this together however I do believe the premise of this word is for today it just resonated inside of me so strongly that women could end up giving the wrong woman the White House and the, the statistics are showing this that women are are gravitating towards Harris and it's a very situation that they could give her the what the White House and this could lead to the destruction of our nation because never in the history of America has so much been at stake at this election. America needs a major, major turning point. If 79% of people believe that we're headed in the direction, the wrong direction, that America is not doing well right now, this election means so much because unless we could either dig our grave even further down or we could begin to work ourselves out of this mess. So it's very important who wins this election. Men are voting for Trump in large numbers. But my strong appeal, and this, vid this video is directed to women and white women in particular, 
because this is my strong appeal to women. I believe that this is part of discipleship, teaching people the church about politics, teaching people how do we vote along biblical lines. This is my strong appeal to women to not be fooled by this woman, Kamala Harris. She is radical left. It's not that she is just left. I don't have a problem. I go every year to Washington, D.C. to work with people. Many of them are on the left because I'm in New York. So Grace Mang, Senator Christine Gildebrand, these are women. They're Democrats. I don't mind working with them. I don't mind talking to them. Camilla Harris is not left. She is radical left. And I believe she will lead America into destruction. And it's very true that, that Camilla Harris seems on the surface, to be more friendly than Donald Trump. She seems to be more likable, but looks can be deceiving. And I feel that many Americans are falling for her charm. I know that I saw Lance Wall now talk about this, how basically he thinks witchcraft is in operation and people were laughing at him, oh, because they think witchcraft means someone brewing, uh, you know, putting a brew together with a witch's hat and a broom. But that's not the true. It could be fail falling for charm, falling for charisma, someone having like a, you know, a huge effect on a group of people. And I believe that that's what's in play here because this woman is a bad vice president. Our state is a disaster, and basically it seems that she did nothing to earn any of these roles, okay? So why is this election even close? I have no idea, but I do believe that Camilla Harris can win this election, and I believe that unless something shifts in the church or unless God does something radically to intervene, that Camilla Harris will win this election. I see a lot of Republicans, a lot of people on the right. Oh, no, this is going to be a blowout for Trump. They said that in 2020. Do not underestimate this woman. And the truth is, is many people are falling for her charm. So my appeal is to women is to make a prayerful decision. Seek wise counsel from people that you respect in the face, that are further along in their journey, that are further along in Bible study and their understanding of things. Do not make this decision based on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, lean not towards your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he will set your path. Do not make a decision based on appearances. Do not make a decision based on personality. We are voting for policies, and we are also voting for a political party. We are voting for the most competent person, not the most likable person, okay? So I gave this thing about my doctor. When I choose a doctor, I want the best doctor. If they're friendly, that's nice, but I don't necessarily need that. I need a doctor that knows what they're doing and is good at treating people. Do not fall for this woman. And there is a warning here that if you do, this could lead to the destruction of America. And this is not crazy based on everything we're seeing in the world these days. So I just want to leave you with one last thing. This is a rally of Camilla Harris at a rally just two days ago where a Christian yells out, Jesus is Lord, in the middle of her rally, and you're going to see her response. Let's play this. 22 days left until... Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade and they did as he intended. <laughs> oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. No, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street.
Okay, so you couldn't really hear it, but somebody yelled out, Jesus is Lord. And she basically yelled back, you're at the wrong rally, Palio. Okay, you're at the wrong rally. Go to the stronger rally down the road. And this shows you right there. I believe God allows these slips of the tongues, because if she was really thought about it, she wouldn't have said something like that. This woman does not care about Christians. She does not care about the church at all. There is a famous quote that says this, when people tell you who they are, you should believe them. Well, she just told you who you are, who she was. Believe her. So I want to leave you one last Bible verse that the Holy Spirit put on my heart. This is relative to choosing a political leader. The Lord has had me personal in 1 Samuel in this political season, and I'm going through Samuel and seeing the process of how they they elected kings and what God's heart and thoughts are on the matter as I'm meditating on this election season. And this is the story of Samuel anointing King David. This is 1 Samuel 16, verses 6 through 7. And this is what it said. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eli and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. A lot of times who we think the person that is the anointed one, that is God's chosen, we look with the eyes, we make this decision, this is it, this is it, this is the person I'm voting for. But then the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearances or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. So that's the last scripture I want to leave you in. Who does God, God sees the hearts of these political candidates. He knows who the right choice is. I know who the right choice is because I'm in touch with God. And we should not be looking at appearances. It's because God sees the hearts of these candidates. He knows what's really going on inside. And I believe very firmly that there's one candidate that really loves this country, that really wants to see this country succeed, and the other one doesn't. So let me know your thoughts on this topic. Could, you, could, could women end up developing all this power and then end up putting a woman president that leads to the destruction of this nation? I believe it's a strong possibility. But let's all be praying for this election. I pray for the election every single day. And this election is so important because it could make or break the future of America. And if you don't even care about the situation because you're older, please think about your children and your grandchildren. Okay, so before I close today, um, I'd love to hear your comments. What you have to say, please, let's get a discussion. Let's try to be civil and um, let's try to be kind to one another. Even if you don't agree with my viewpoints, that's fine. But just be respectful in the comments, okay? So if you would like to support the channel so I can continue to bring you videos like this in, in the past, you can hit the give button right on YouTube. Or you can look in the description seven in the video to figure out how to give a one-time donation via PayPal or Zelle. No compulsion. This is just if the video has blessed you. And if you really love the content, please become a monthly partner, either on YouTube by hitting the join button or go on over to Patreon for Torn Curtain. Monthly partners get extra perks. I can interact with you a little bit closer. And it just started a community chat this week for us. And I continue, I can't continue to do this ministry long term without getting monthly supporters because this takes a lot of time. It's very expensive. It's, it takes a lot of resources. So I really appreciate that. But again, no compulsion. That's only if this ministry has blessed you and you feel like it's brought value to your life. So thank you. And, and real quick, let me pray for, um, for this nation, for this presidency before I close the video, okay? So, Lord, we just uh, bring this word here from William Brennan. There's a vision that he received in 1933. God, I'm not sure if you inspired that or the exact details of that that happened a few decades ago. But the general idea of what William Brennan is presenting here, we're seeing become a reality in our time that women have the largest voting block in America right now, and they have the ability to possibly put a woman president in the right house, that I feel is possibly the wrong choice that could lead to the destruction of this country. 
And William Brennan's vision was pretty dramatic. And as dramatic as that is, and as hard it is to believe that something like that could happen, it can happen, God. We pray right now, I pray for the godly women out there, and even liberal women out there that are just making this decision for this election. The Lord, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would open up eyes and hearts for women to see the truth in this upcoming election, to not see gender, to not see outside appearances, but to make the decision that is in alignment with your heart, that is in alignment with Christian values. Because if women don't vote right in this election, This could have dramatic implications for America. So, Lord, I just speak to the women that you would give them wisdom from the power of the Holy Spirit to choose the right person, particularly liberal women, particularly white women. God, that they would do the right thing. Because if Camilla Harris wins, it's going to be because women will put her in office. And, Lord, we saw with JFK, the women put him in office. It did It was a total disaster for this country on so many levels. Lord, this is not about being misogynistic or 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 being anti women. Women are amazing. Women bring so much to the world. Women are the heart and soul of the family, the heart and soul in many churches. The best prayer leaders are women. The best Esters are women. Lord, we, we just we bless women, but God, we just want to make a good decision in this upcoming election. By the power of the Holy Spirit, fall on women and begin to move in their hearts and minds and show them the right way to vote because there is so much at stake at this election. We say this and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for listening today. Be blessed.